Hello, Alexander here once more for chapter 14. This is long-term liabilities, bonds, and notes. So this is what I was saying, bonds, another instrument that's hard for people. Not because it's not so much for the bond itself, but the entries that go along with it because of the premiums and discounts. So as always, let me start with the intro. It's always interesting. The intro always explains to me a lot. So uh, we're here with Under Armour. So most of us don't have enough money in our bank accounts to buy a house or a car simply by writing a check. Just imagine if you had to save the entire purchase price of a house before you could buy it. To help us make these types of purchases, banks will typically lend us the money as long as we, are re as long as we agree to repay the loan with interest and in smaller future payments. Loans such as this, or long-term debt, allow us to purchase assets as, such as houses and cars today. So instead of waiting and saving money and having to buy something with full cash, you can have it today and just make payments on it and pay a little bit more in the long run, which will benefit us over the long run. So the use of debt can also help a business uh, reach its objectives most businesses have to borrow money in order to acquire assets that they use to generate income. For example, Under Armour, a maker of performance athletic clothing, uses debt to acquire assets that it needs to manufacture and sell its products. Since it began in 1995, the company has used long-term debt to transform itself from a small business to a leading athletic wear company. The company now sells products in over 8,000 retail stores across the world. In addition, Under Armour products are used by a number of teams in the National Football League, Major League Baseball, and National Hockey League, and in Olympic sports. Why debt can help companies like Under Armour grow to achieve financial success, too much debt can be a financial burden that, many, that may even lead to bankruptcy. Just like individuals, businesses must manage debt wisely. In this chapter, we discuss the nature of accounting for analysis of and investments in long-term debt. So bonds, there's a, uh, here's, okay, financing corporations. So corporations finance their operations using the following sources in three ways. Number one, short-term debt, such as purchasing goods or services on account. And number two, long-term debt, such as issuing bonds or notes payable. And three, equity, such as issuing common stock or preferred stock. So a bond's a lot like a note. It's long-term, it pays interest. The difference with a bond, though, is there's a whole market for bonds. A note is usually something that a bank will do with you or someone personally would do with you. A bond is a very equivalent to a stock as, it ha as, as it's bought and sold. It's traded a lot of times. So a bond... Let's say you issue a bond for a million. So you get a million dollars and a million dollars in debt. So what you do is every two years, every year you pay two interest payments of, uh, of half the interest. So if it's a million dollars and it's 10%, it'd be $100,000 interest, but split up in two payments. So 50,000, uh, maybe about in June and then another 50 in, in December. And so that's usually how bonds work semi-annual interest payments. And with the bond, after this, the 30 years or whatnot, the man, as many years it is, you'll have to pay the million back along with the last interest payment of 50,000. So yeah, you get the million for 30 years, but you'll have to pay it back at the end of 30 years. And, and every year you have to pay, make two interest payments along with it. So you're paying interest to hold on to it. And so with a bond, I was talking about the market. With a bond, you either have a bond um, below the selling price, equal to, face, equal to face amount, or above the face amount. So we have a discount, a fa uh, face amount, or premium. And what that means, the best way I can explain this is if you bought a bond that was paying 7% interest and the market is 10%, and let's say it's a hundred thousand dollar bond, you're only going to pay maybe nine hundred thousand dollars because that three percent less that you're getting 
is going to make be made up for in the fact that it's cheaper to get it. You see how that works? Because what's going to end up happening is you're getting less interest from the proceeds, so they're going to have to sell you that bond for less so that it makes up for the fact that you lost on that 3% interest. It's a there's it's a time value of money also. Um, that's what can throw people off. And so a premium is a premium is, let's say, I buy a bond, it's a 10% bond, and it's a 3% market. Well, what's going to end up happening is I'm paying higher interest for it. So I'm going to get a better, it's going to be uh, more expensive for me to get that bond. So if I want to buy, let's say, John's has a 10% interest bond and it's a 7% market, I'm going to pay him $110,000 for his $100,000 bond because I'm going to be getting more interest to make up for it. So that's the base, that's the concept uh, as, for, as much as for journal entries. If it's issued at face amount, so the interest, the market interest is equal to the fa the market, uh, the uh, bond amount of interest. It's a hundred thousand dollar bond. I will, if I'm going to issue, if I'm going to issue it, which means I'm getting the money and getting the debt, I'm going to debit cash for hundred thousand dollars, and I'm going to credit bonds payable for hundred thousand dollars. And then it's paid every six months. June 30th and December 31st, like I was saying. So 100,000 times 12% is 12,000, but cut that in half because we're doing semi-annual. So on June 30th, I'm going to debit interest expense for 6,000 and credit cash for 6,000. And then at the end of the life of the bond, um, I'm going to debit bond payable, credit the cash for the 100000 So I'm going to end up paying back all that money to get it off the books. So now let's see a discount. So here's a discount. Let's say the bond is 12% as it was before, but now the market is 13%. And I guess it's five-year bond. This is a five-year bond. So when we buy the bond, it only costs us $96,406. That's what we debit. Then we credit, then, oh, and then we debit, uh, we credit bonds payable $100,000. And then the difference between the $100,000 and $96,406 is a debit of $3,594, which is a discount on bonds payable, which is um, a debit. Now, how do you how do you amortize? The, uh, we're going to get an amortization. Amortizing a bond discount or premium, which will be next, is done like so. Every time you pay an interest payment, you know how interest expense is debited. Well, here's what you're going to do. What you do is you take the amount of the discount divided by five years, gives you the yearly. Cut in half, gives you the semi-annual amount. So every time you pay an interest payment. You're going to debit interest expense like normal, but with a discount, you're going to credit a discount on bonds payable equal to the amount of the discount divided by the bond years cut in half. And what's left over between the discount and the interest is the cash. So a discount is going to increase your interest expense. Uh, but that's what it's going to do. It's going to increase your interest expense because your cash is always going to be the amount of interest on the bond. But the discount is going to increase the interest to bring up, to bring that interest up to what other people are paying. Now the, now the opposite is true for a premium. So a premium, let's say we have the bond market is 11% and we bought it 12%. So five years also. We're going to debit cash now for $103,769. Uh, 
uh, credit the bond payable for the 100000 but now we're going to also credit premium on bonds payable at 3769 So it's the opposite of a discount because we, we got more money for the bond because the market's less. And so when we amortize that premium every, every uh, uh, interest payment period, we're going to debit interest expense for, uh, oh wait, we're going to credit cash for the amount of the interest we pay, but the premium is what we're going to do with the discount. We're going to take the premium, the total premium, divided by five years, and then cut in half. And the premium is now going to bring down our interest expense because our interest expense is not going to be the full 6000 Now it's going to be less the premium. So premiums drive down the interest expense where a discount raises it up. And then finally, and I'll do a problem too on the bonds, uh, probably do a premium and a discount, a bond redemption. This is the last part of a bond is when you buy a bond on the market, you don't have to keep it forever. You can find another buyer who wants to buy it. It's like, a it's like the stock market. There's a bond market. So what you do is when you find a buyer, you'll debit bonds payable for $25,000 in the face, take off any premium with the, di with the debit or as if, it is, if it's a discount, credit it. Uh, and then credit cash, take it off because you're, if you're, if oh, this is actually a redemption, you're basically selling it off or you're retiring it. So you're going to credit cash for the amount that you're paying to get rid of it. Debit bonds payable to get rid of it. And then the difference between the cash bond and the face and the premium is either a gain or a loss. And the easiest way to do that is to set up the journal entries and just figure out what the difference is on that. And it's, if it's a credit, it's a gain. If it's a debit, it's a loss. And so that is, that's basically the bonds. Uh, uh, once again, I'll have to do a, a problem on it, but I hope that clears it up. And thank you. Uh, please, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, like, subscribe if you would. And I'll be back for the next one. Thank you.